Hey, what's up everyone? It's me, Matt, from Diazabo, and here we're checking out another album review. And today, we're checking out the band Rancid with the album Tomorrow Never Comes. And I think a lot of you might already know who Rancid is, but for those who don't know, Rancid is a legendary punk band out from Berkeley, California. They are what is the remains of an older band called Operation Ivy. Uh, I think when the lead singer, Tim Armstrong and Matt Freeman started a new band back in the 90s after Operation Ivy uh, broke up, which I still need to check out because I heard they're really influential. Uh, started a new band, it's called Rancid, and they've been going strong for about 25 years. They put out nothing but bangers, great albums for the past 25 years, and I think they're not stopping anytime soon. And with that out the way, let's get into this review about Rancid. Woo! Oh, and a little bit about Rancid, about me and Rancid. I don't much, know much about Rancid or the punk scene. I'm relatively relatively new to the punk scene in terms of listening to new bands because I just wasn't into it. I was more of a metal guy, but now I'm getting into the punk scene, which I'm pretty stoked on. Starting this album, we have Tomorrow Never Comes, the title song of the album. Uh, it's very fast, spastic, it's groovy. Overall, it's a very catchy song. Good way to start the album, I think. The flow of the, al the song, really, really nice. Uh, everything uh, just seems to hit right. The bass is really good. It's really amazing. The drums are very punchy. Uh, the guitar solo is a little washed out, but it sounds kind of cool. And uh, overall, I feel like uh, the song, there's like no bullshit to it. It's very straight to the point, and it just hits everything really right. Yeah. And everyone is mic'd up really well. So everyone's pretty cl like clearly... Hey guys, have you checked out any of the merch from uh, Diazable that we have on our online store? We have some of these designs up, some cool gym looking gear, fan favorite, baby noodle, be a fucking devil, yeah, some of our most hated merch ever, but I love hate breed, yay, sticker packs too, who doesn't like baby noodle eating pizza, yeah, keychains, yeah, and of course, we have koozies. Yeah, who doesn't like a good koozie? So check out our merch store, diazable.com, and support your local business. And a friend who's not trying to work a nine to five anymore. I'm trying to do something with my life. Mud, Blood, and Glory is up next. Uh, it has some, some scruffy gang vocals to it. And overall, I feel it has a very polished punk sound, very refined. They really honed in on the punk sound that they've been creating for the past 25 years. Uh, again, the bass is very mesmerizing. I think that's one of Rance's very strong points. They really know how to utilize the bass. And it's another song with another catchy hook. Devil in Disguise. It has um, a very, very, uh, I want to say, British oi punk sound at the beginning of the song with the uh, bass solo. Like it reminded me of like some of the punk friends I've met over the years and just who are like really like into British oi punk. Uh, it's very, it's like I said earlier, it's very refined. It's very clean in the best way. Like they've made punk sound super clean, but still sound punk. Uh, easy to, the lyrics are very easy in here to uh, like to digest and have fun. It's a very fun sing along kind of track. Again, they got another catchy chorus. Uh, overall, it feels like a very fun drinking song and uh, has a nice kick drum build up towards the end of the song. And overall, I think this is one of the like, a standout track on this album, which makes me want to play a little clip for y'all. Yeah, it may be the devil in disguise. Cops are taking murder deeds, but to say the Jews and police offer sale, barbarous town, disappear. So, yeah, devil in disguise. American. Uh, overall, the song seems turned down compared to the first three tracks, and the vocals are turned up really high. You can, you can be really heard. Um, the guitar riffs are pretty fun throughout the song. Drums, surprisingly, were a little bit quiet here, hard to hear. Uh, and the vocals are turned up, but they sound a little bit off and a little janky. Um, this is the first song I feel like that was a bit of a hiccup in terms of the flow of the album. And it's just an overall like, okay. Bloody song. and violent history. Um, first thing I noticed on this track was the uh, drums sound very bold. Like they weren't like smaller, they just mm, very like large and you can hear them. Um, and overall, the song is it's a good song, but the biggest gripe I have with it is that uh, his vocals, uh, he sounds tired, he sounds kind of lazy. Um, 
I don't know, like he didn't want to do the song or the chorus. They just the chorus seems so really dead, like very flat, very um, it's not a very fun song, it sounds like. But with a name like the bloody and hit the violent history, they're probably talking about something pretty, pretty sad. So I don't think they want to be upbeat about it, but it's a very stark contrast compared to the previous songs. Uh guitar solo is really good here. The instrument, the playing of the song sounds pretty good, but the vocals really drag down this uh song for me, I think. Don't make me do it. After the previous song and this like short, sweet song, it is fucking fierce, it is fucking fire, it's fast, it's punchy. The backing vocals cut like a knife. There's so much passion in this short song. And I feel like if you could like summarize rancid in a small package and with at least newer rants, I feel like a lot of people will agree, like, oh. This is like fucking rented, mate. So uh, with that being said, I want to play a little clip of uh, this song. You can't help but like not sing along to it. It's a road to righteousness. Again, uh, well, not again, but the lazy vocals seem to be like sounding better here like they're lazy but they seem like there's more passion behind them the song overall has a lot of dynamics to it very lots of like different playing styles different uh uh changing of like song patterns and stuff uh slick guitar solo in this song uh, and this song the drums and bass are really like to get live forever to me it's a very very bouncy like jumpy kind of like vibe of song like it gets you it gets the people going as some people would say um lots of like two-stepping and skanking to this song if you look like two-stepping and stuff you'll like this song a lot i think um and everyone uh, overall just sound tight and in the pocket they just they got Drop dead in uh from the get-go the song has a very fast upbeat intro and as this might sound weird but the guitars sound really stringy and staticky to me like, they just sound really, really high. It's the best way I can describe it at the moment. And um, the eeps and flows of, like, how this, uh, how the guitars play, they go from, like, being in the foreground to the background. They flow really well throughout this uh, this song. And while listening to this song, I feel like, like, during, like, a live performance, it gives me lots of vibes of, like, people want to do stage dives, dog piles to get on the mic to sing this song. Very, very, like, together, like, fun singing song. Prisoner song. Uh, off the cuff, I think it gives me as this, I don't know if this is a genre, but like very strong Californian punk vibes, like skate punk, that surfer style, very free chilling punk sound. Again, the the flow of the bass, the bass throughout, I think all of Rance's records and this record is always killing it. It's there. It's very prominent and it's just, it gets stuck in your head. Uh, the vocals sound very like full and hungry to sing. Like they're very visceral and very good. Um, but at the second half of the song, it's a little like all over the point place a little bit. And I think there's like a guest vocalist and it doesn't seem to hit that well. And with that being said, uh, this is not one of my favorite songs in this uh, album, but I still want to play a clip of it to show that maybe what I'm talking about is correct or not. Let me know. But yeah, check it out. that bass is very strong on the song am i right magnificent room like a car shooting out of a parking lot garage this track is fast and speedy compared to the other songs it's just it's very very fast um again drums bass they are locked in uh the vocals are match the song really well vocal patterns and like the the volume of them of the voice vocals uh the so the solo the guitar solo sounds really good under the drums like they put the drums higher on the mix than the solo and it blends really well overall this is a fantastic track one way ticket um overall the how i felt about the song they all just sound really good here they're all singing together tim sounds really awake and it's just a, i think everyone really got into this song it feels like and it just kind of like feels like a really good song i had i had I, I didn't have too many notes on this song. It just seemed like it was just an overall really good song that the band wanted to play. Hellbound Train. Um, when I initially heard this song was listening to it, I could feel like it's a bunch of guys just like friends sitting around getting drunk and singing along to a song. It gives that vibes of like being in a pub or something. 
Um, they also kind of sound drunk on this album, on this track. So I wonder if that's uh, just what they were doing or they were actually got drunk or something. I don't know. It just sounded really fun. But I will say also, too, this is the first sign of like mm, this this uh, song seems a little bit repetitive and similar to older songs on this album. But by the end of the song, they change the tempo up a little bit and everything just seems to like sound a lot better. So it kind of saved the song for me. Eddie the Butcher starts off with a nice bass solo intro like, oh, OK, I see what we're doing here. It's pretty dope. Um, the mixing is pretty good on this uh, track overall. And they use in like a megaphone uh, in part of the song. And it kind of adds a nice variety to the album. And there's a nice bass solo, which is really, really good. Uh, switching it up from like guitar riffing and kind of more of a bass heavy oriented song. Overall, the song is very menacing. And it's kind of like, it sounds really kind of like they're pissed a little bit. But uh, here's a little clip of Eddie the Butcher. <laughs> Eddie the Butcher, hear us out. Um, the tuning on this uh, track sounds really good. Um, the instruments, everything, everyone who's playing the instrument and everything sounds really, really good and just playing really well. But the only thing that uh, bugged me about this was, again, the vocals. They seem a bit lacking, kind of lackluster. And the song, like, they're playing really well, but also it kind of feels like it's a rush song. Like, it ends way too sooner than it should. When the smoke clears. Now... He definitely sounds drunk here. I don't know what it is. I don't know if he drinks or not. I'm not sure, but he sounds really drunk. And but it gives a very, very punk sound to it. And whatever. And like the vocals just seem like whatever. The performer seems kind of like mid. But I feel like that was kind of the point with this track to kind of be whatever as a closing track. It's kind of like we don't give a fuck. It's just like eh, because it just it's kind of like whatever. But yeah. And that was my review of Rance's new album, Tomorrow Never Comes. Um, the only thing, the one thing that got me, like, I noticed about this album is the production. The production sounds really good. And maybe that's because me, like, all the punk sound, albums I've ever heard here throughout my life have always sounded like shit. And I think that's why part of the point of the DIY culture and just punk culture in general. And that's what always kind of turned me off. Granted, I'm older. I'm more into punk now. I don't mind that sound. I kind of like it now. But this is definitely like a good album for new and young old punks because it sounds crisp. It sounds really good production wise. Very, very good. As I was saying in my other written review, it's punk with money. This is what it sounds like punk can be with if you have good money, throw it into the album. And with uh, you have years of experience, it just sounds really good. But it also talks to the older generation because it's like, hey, we're rancid. We've been in the game. We're still putting out bangers that you like and stuff. But it just happens to sound cleaner than compared to our older demo days and older uh, stuff. So I feel like they were, they can bridge a lot of a uh, generational gap with this, uh, this album. Uh, bass and drums are just in the pocket for the most part, they're very good. Guitars sound really nice and the guitars, the solos and riffs uh, thrown in throughout the album are like placed nice, nicely spread thoroughly throughout the album. Uh, the only thing I have a problem was uh, his vocals. Uh, at times it seemed like he didn't want to sing at times he was really like enjoying singing so it was a very mixed bag in terms of vocal performance so with that being said overall it's a great album I like it uh, it's my first ranted album I've ever fully listened to so if this is the first and like people are saying like they're old albums like, like and when the wolves came out it's amazing which I gotta check out soon because I never did sorry um, I think this is, album is a solid solid eight out of ten so yeah that is our review of the new rancid album when tomorrow comes well tomorrow never comes sorry links down below check it out comment subscribe like thank you guys for coming by and i will see you guys real soon with another review or reaction bye